UTC and welcome to this edition of Mox News. I'm Livia Bradley. Let's take a look at campus news. During homecoming week, Greek students participate in field games. One of the most popular events is the Dizzy Bat Race and Relay. Students have to spin around on a bat, then run to the next station to cover themselves in paint. Next, they run with buckets of paint on their heads to fill another bucket to the top and send their final teammates to the finish line in a three-legged race. Why in the world are they doing this? Because the Greek organizations want to win points to go towards winning the homecoming trophy at the end of the game. This year, the Greek winners were Chi Omega and Pike, while SEA and RHA tied for first place in the organization category. UTC's annual step show was held in McKenzie Arena during the week of homecoming. Groups on campus came to stage to show their moves. Chi Omega stole the show with their cops and robbers theme, while other sororities and fraternities went home disappointed. Homecoming came to an end with Chattanooga's 10th annual Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure on UTC's campus. More than 8,000 runners and walkers, a record crowd, turned out for this year's 5K run and one mile walk. The race is named after Susan G. Komen, an Illinois woman who died from breast cancer in 1980 at the age of 33. Komen's sister organized the first race for the cure in her sister's memory in 1982. Chattanooga is now one of the 120 cities that host a race. Together, the races have raised more than $1.2 billion to fight breast cancer. The fall fling took place before the golf cart parade, and our own Christy Minton was there to report. I'm here at UTC, the student park, for the homecoming week fall fling. We wanted to check out and see what all fall fling really was about. The fall fling is a fun event during homecoming week where students can come out to the student park in between their classes and enjoy flatables, free food, hang out, and relax and talk amongst all of their friends. UTC junior Tanya Rhodes gave us a little more insight about the exciting event that took place last Friday. Fun time for students to come outside and hang out with each other. Um, there's lots of inflatables and there's food like funnel cakes and cotton candy and snow cones for them to just have fun and like, get away from classes for a little bit and just enjoy themselves during the homecoming. 2009 homecoming fall fling was another great success this year. Thanks for all the students who came out. I'm Christy Mitten reporting for Mox News. One of the most popular events during UTC's homecoming is the golf cart parade, the day before the big game. Hello, and I'm Olivia Bradley with Mox News. And I'm standing outside of the UC today where many students and faculty are trying to prepare for the golf cart parade to run through Student Park. On this steamy Friday morning of September, students could see fellow classmates making paper mache superheroes and cardboard Batmobiles in front of the UTC Pavilion. It is here where UTC organizations came to prepare for the homecoming tradition of the golf cart parade and the fall fleet. Groups like A together their golf carts, one of which even featured a cape scrappy flying on top of the cart for the parade. Amanda Wagner, a senior with the Student Alumni Council, explained what went into creating their cart for the parade. A lot of paint, a lot of glitter, a lot of time working together as a team. But it's worth it because it comes together and it becomes a really cool cart of a big one. Let's go over to Mock Sports. Thanks, Olivia. I'm here at the First Tennessee Pavilion where the tailgate has just ended and people are making their way into the stadium for the homecoming game. Now let's head over to Bill Puckett for the play-by-play -play of the game. As the rain stopped and the skies cleared over Finley Stadium on Saturday, September 26, the Mocs took the field for the homecoming game against number 17 SoCon opponent Wofford. The Mocs defeated the FCS-ranked team in dominating style 38-9. The Mocs had success on both sides of the ball as the defense held the Terriers to a mere 226 yards of total offense. Sophomore quarterback B.J. Coleman put up big numbers on the day with 23 completions, four finding their way into the end zone. Coleman spread the love to multiple receivers in the game with three different receivers pulling in TD catches. Junior Chris Pitchford recorded eight catches and a touchdown, while senior captain Clint Woods hauled in five receptions and a touchdown. And finally, senior Blue Cooper had the most scores on the day with five catches, two for touchdowns. The Mock's special team shined at the homecoming game with a field goal to end the first half and a fumble recovery for a touchdown after a safety against the Mocks. Freshman Ryan Consiglio was honored again this week for his play, earning the SoCon Freshman of the Week. Consiglio led the Mocs in tackles for a second straight game, dragging down nine Terriers, four of them solos, and one for a loss. 
The Mocs have a bye week this week, but travel to Birmingham, Alabama next weekend to play Samford. Any students interested in going to the game can get a spot on the bus trip leaving from McKenzie Arena Saturday, October 10th. It is $50 for the travel package, which includes a round trip bus ride, tailgating with a meal, and a ticket to get into the game. Anyone who wants to go needs to sign up by Wednesday, October 7th by contacting Assistant Director of Alumni Affairs, Patrick Miles. Let's take a look at volleyball action with Janae. The Lady Mocs face off with Belmont Bruins Wednesday night at the McKellen Gym. The Lady Mocs started off the first set on a good foot as they quickly had a 15-8 lead against the Bruins and went on to claim the first set with a 25-18 win. In the second set, there were six lead changes and nine ties and the Bruins took the victory with a 23-25 win as they had 17 kills and a .310 hitting percentage against the Lady Mocs. The Lady Mocs were keeping up with Belmont and caused 15 lead changes and 28 ties between the third and fourth set. But the Mocs were unable to stop the Bruins' strong defense as Belmont took the next two sets with a 25-19 to 19 win in each frame. On offense, junior Courtney Barnes had 12 kills and sophomore Ellie Kuhn came out with 8 kills in the loss. Junior Bailey Chaston had 27 assists and 15 digs, which became her fourth double-double of the season. Also with double digits were freshman Libro Paula Passmore, who had 24 digs to lead the Lady Mocs, and sophomore Laura Brock, who had a season high of 17 digs for the night. I got a chance to speak to Lady Mocs head coach, Lisa Rose, after the game, and this is what she had to say. I think that we can take this loss and learn from it. Um, I feel like that we just kind of played a little bit out of sync, which is to be expected when you have as many freshmen as we do. You know, we just came out really strong in the first set and passed real well, and then our passing kind of shut down. And it was kind of a domino effect. Once, once the Lady Mock's record fell to 8-5 to five after the loss against Belmont. Stay tuned in for more sports updates. I'm Janae Robertson with Mox News. That's going to do it for this edition of Mox News. Be sure to check us out on Comcast Channel 3 or www.moxnews.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.